Well, hello and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Today I'd like to give you just a brief overview of uh, KE9NS revisions to power SDR for the Flex 5000, 3000, and 1500. This software runs on all three of them. What's been going on is uh, Daryl uh, Kilo Echo 9 November Sierra has been revising power SDR with the help of the engineers over at Flex Radio and I certainly thank them for helping uh, upgrade power SDR. As some of you Flex users know, it hadn't really been upgraded in the last year, year and a half. And it's kind of stuck on version 2.7.2. But uh, KE9NS has uh, basically taken, taken the original software and added a bunch of very neat features to it. So I want to just simply show you some of those today in a brief summary. You can go to his website, KE9NS.com click the little link at the top of the page that says Flex 5000 and you'll go right to the page that has the software on it, the revision, which is the latest revision is T7 and that's what I'm running right now on the screen and uh, he's also got oh, six or seven videos there showing in detail all of the revisions that he's done so far. So he goes into great detail. So now I'm not going to try to do that. I'm just going to point out some new features just to uh, tweak your interest a little bit. I can tell you he's given me a brand new radio again. So I'm very happy with my Flex 3000. Right off the bat, you'll notice that it now has two meters on it. This one up here and another one below. So you don't have to get a Bob's meter anymore. He's uh, developed one that has a uh, peak reading needle. The little red needle that you see here is indicating the peak signal. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's one of his new revisions. He's given you a peak reading meter. It's also given you the option of uh, putting a second meter on the screen and selecting one of these parameters for it to measure. So it can measure forward power, reflected power, SWR, the mic, uh, the EQ and DB, and ALC, and so forth. I've got mine set on SWR uh, at the current time so I can keep an eye on it when I'm transmitting. So uh, kind of two neat features. Now some of you flexors out there who are very familiar with the uh, original Power SDR screen have probably already noticed this red SWL up here which stands for short wave listening. So let's click that. And as you can see, he's added all the bands for shortwave uh, radio. He's also put in about 11,000 shortwave stations into this software. And by selecting the spotting box up here and then turning on shortwave listening, it will put a little indicator like this, a little line, and it will put the name of the radio station on the side of the line. So right off the bat, he's probably given you one of the best receiving shortwave listening radios you could possibly want to own. He's also added DX spotting live DX spotting to the uh, screen. You're looking at one of those spots right now, this RA9CU. You can see it's positioned here. Uh, 
I had a certain frequency on, in the band, and we're on 40 meters right now. And uh, if you scroll across or move the band, you can see there's another one there. Let's kind of go the other way and see if there's anything up there. May or may not be. I this is nighttime. So. But uh, anyway, the screen is a live screen right now. Everything on the screen actually works. If you look over here, you'll see an image of the sun with a little solar data right here. And this is telling me this solar flux is 88 and the A index is 21 right now. And the sun is actually in its proper position on this map uh, of the globe, this global map. You can also see he's got the gray line in there indicated. All that happens when you click uh, track, track in this spotting box uh, once you click it and it comes up you click track you get the sun you get the globe uh, image in the back you get the gray line and you get a new uh, screen with the pan adapter being two-thirds of the screen and the waterfall being one-third of the screen that all happens at the same time uh, if you remember, the original version of Power SDR splits it 50-50, half pan adapter, half waterfall. I really like this uh, two-third, one-third waterfall arrangement that he's come up with. Really looks good. Uh, you'll also notice a little text down here that says auto waterfall pan level. A lot of times when you switch antennas, uh, the waterfall will be either too much gain or not enough gain, so the signals don't show quite right. If you click this, right click it, uh, it automatically adjusts it to uh, the proper gain. He's also added some temperature indicators over here and voltage indicators. Uh, just so you can see what's going on with your CPU and uh, uh, let's see make sure I'm not missing something yes up at the top you see my call sign up there up there W1XWX if I click that it will transmit my call sign into the waterfall and it'll actually print out on the waterfall. Anyone else with a waterfall will see my call sign written out on the waterfall. Kind of a neat feature that he's added. Now, you're seeing a lot of spots show up on the screen now. What's important to remember is you can turn these on or off. And there's some adjustments that you can make to kind of clean up the screen a little bit. Uh, I've got everything running just uh, to give you an idea of what it looks like. If we go up here to this call sign, uh, for instance, and we uh, click it, it will all automatically change the radio to the frequency that that call sign is on and change the mode and uh, uh, do all that automatically. Uh, so if, if it happens to be a CW, it'll change the radio to CW mode and uh, put it right on the frequency with that call sign. Meanwhile, on these DX spots, and here's one right here, uh, if you click that call sign and, and press control, it automatically opens up a, the QRZ call sign page for that call sign. So uh, basically everything on the screen now is live. It's just not a picture. The, uh, the things you see on the screen are do something. So uh, you've got shortwave listening stations now that you can turn on or turn off. You've got DX spotting now that's uh, basically uh, 
shows the exact spots. So uh, all you have to do is uh, scan the band a little bit, move around, and you'll see the spots indicated with the call sign. Uh, he's done a few things to that too. Uh, he makes sure that if it's not spotted again, within 30 minutes that it drops off the screen. So pretty neat little, uh, he, he did a little thinking when he set it up. So uh, old DX spots go away. Anyway, I encourage you to go on out to KE9NS's website, take a look at this and uh, get look at his videos. He goes into a lot of detail on how to set set all this up. Uh, I'm really happy that someone has taken Power SDR and is now upgrading it. And I, I want to thank to the flex engineers that are helping uh, him do this and provide it at no cost to the uh, ham radio operators who are running a flex radio. Anyway, as I usually do, I wish you clear skies in 73. And keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. And go out there and get you a flex radio. Till next time, everybody be good. See y'all later.